Hi, Karadsters! And dito na naman ako for my second wedding vlog, wedding vlog actually rather, of um, my stay here in the Philippines. And um, sorry, hindi ako masyado na kapag upload, but it's um, one week, uh, one month. I'm sorry, from my wedding day. So in upload ko na tong second uh, wedding vlog ko. Uh, good morning. It's about 11 o'clock here sa Manila. And uh, naasikaso na namin lahat ng mga kailangan asikasuhin sa kasal. It's almost about 70% done. Nabayaran na lahat ng nabayaran. Naasikaso na lahat ng naasikaso. And let me just tell you the breakdown of um, the cost and the hassle of a wedding here in the Philippines in comparison. Well, not in comparison, but just based on my brother's uh, wedding uh, pa this pa uh, last year, 2019 ng April, kinasal yung kapatid ko si Domingo sa St. John the Baptist, which is the church that uh, that we grew up in, sa kanyang uh, fiancé, then fiancé na si Catherine. And the uh, reception was held at David's Restaurant na katapat lang ng Levi Stadium sa Santa Clara. Um, it was a good, it was a great um, wedding venue kasi nga nandun sa tapat ng stadium and it accommodated almost everybody in our family and friends uh, the food was good the food was great and um, well you know yung company ng mami ko yung Amberwood Gardens na pinagtatrabaho ng mami ko at saka ako before we always, we always hold the Christmas uh, parties there so we know the food but you know, um, for the wedding reception, it's quite a bit different. Pero uh, nonetheless, masarap pa din. So in comparison, and then uh, nagdecide kami na I hold yung uh, wedding ko here, wishing and praying that it's much cheaper. But with the cost and uh, uh, like what I said, struggle of everything, getting all the paperwork,s going to places, seminars, I think it's about a little bit the same kung magkano yung ma magagastos natin sa America and magagastos natin sa Pilipinas. Uh, first and foremost, shout out sa Whip Cups. Ito yung uh, kabibili ko lang na kanilang uh, Benton Webby series na may balisong yung, uh, yung harap and uh, then the words Benton Webby sa, sa rear. And it just happens to be na hindi ko napansin yung Bentenweve and stupid of me na Bentenweve, Bentenweve also stands for uh, what they call the balisong in, in terms of I think inches or centimeters depending but the history of that um, is um, to be to be continued to be I don't know to be researched but shout out to Whip Cups napaganda nung napaganda nung sombrero nyo okay so Let's all start with the church. The church is going to be in San Felipe Neri, which is just um, two kilometers away from where we live, which is in Sunny Boy. And it's the church that me and two of my brothers, Donnie and Domingo, uh, have, have been fond of going since we were in elementary school because that's where we, the, the school besides it is where we went to. Uh, San Felipe Neri Parochial School is the the school that we went to when uh, elementary during our elementary days, and uh, so that's why it's very familiar uh, near our home. Although we go to church in uh, Saint Joseph's uh, Chapel, which is just a few blocks away from here, but the our um, our main church or our main parish is also in in another uh, church, which is in uh, Our Lady of the Abandoned. But San, Fil San Felipe Neri is um, um, in dear, in de uh, is, is very dear to us because that's the church that we grew up uh, going to church in and you know uh, holding weddings, first communions, graduations, everything was everything happened there. So uh, for most of people in San Iboy and Mandaluyong, San Felipe Neri Church is. Um, very uh, historical, very valuable, very um, dear to them, like what I said. So that's where we're gonna. Uh, that's where me and my fiance is gonna be holding the wedding, uh, and the wedding is coming up soon. And 
we're still in the process of uh, pro of uh, finishing everything from the dress to the paperworks. There's we finished uh, most of the payments, but you know, still a bit still a bit more going on. So, anyways, so that's where we're gonna that's where we're gonna hold the uh, the wedding, San Felipeinary Church in uh, Eighty Reyes, and history of the church. Um, it's been erected since the 1500s and it's historical for Mandaluyong because it's where um, a lot of revolutionaries went to during uh, the Spaniards occupation and that's where a lot of uh, soldiers went to during the times of the Japanese occupation so it's very historical in terms of um, in terms of his uh, in terms of rich and vast history and the church itself like what I, I will describe on uh, on the video is very uh, picturesque because it's uh, one of these old-school uh, classical uh, stone churches and it's when you when you see it when you marvel at it it's 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 like a gem in the middle of chaos you know you have this uh, boom, boom, booming suburban metropolis around it marketplace two two marketplaces around um, schools all around it but the mere place or, or the center on where it sits you can just see it you can just marvel and you know see the the uh, glory in which where the where the church stands, there there are a lot of um, historical changes around it and modern changes around it rather, but the church kept its beauty and uh, you have to see the pictures that I will upload and uh, you'll be the judge, right? But for me, it's you know one of the best churches that I've seen, and also the acoustics, the acoustics in the church, and of course my family will be wanting for a church that has uh, really good acoustics because my my uncle will be the one singing the whole uh, the whole ceremony and w the the church boasts superb acoustics and it's natural acoustics although they added a few um, uh, sound systems and microphones and uh, uh, amplifiers around the church but you can still hear the natural sounding um, ringing of voices when you go in the church for uh, for mass so I think it's gonna be one of the great um, services that my my uncle is gonna perform at or is gonna um, uh, attend that and I think he's gonna like it <laughs> and that's all I can say and uh, the guests, there we settled for 180 guests, and I think that's more than enough for my family, or some of my family, some of my relatives to attend to, and um, some of uh, Jeline, my fiance's uh, family and relatives and friends to attend. So um, hopefully it's gonna be enough, and hopefully. <laughs> so and then the reception is gonna be. Uh, at Glass Garden, which is in the border of Marikina and Pasi. Uh, it's, uh, I'm gonna upload the pictures again, and you be the judge of the place. It's, uh, we picked it for, well, mainly the reason of holding a lot of people. You know, we have a lot of choices, but, and also, secondly, it's the cost because uh, for for the cost and for the capacity of the place it's great it's very very affordable it's very very convenient although it's a bit farther than a lot of the places that we've looked at it's almost uh, 22 miles uh, away from us but and and the traffic on Tuesday on a Tuesday that day um, we we're just gonna be praying that there's not gonna be that much traffic, but it's drive it's doable. The 
the the commute there is doable. So it's called the Glass Garden in Marikina. Check them out in their websites. Great people and uh, I'll be very accommodating. They're gonna give you a tour. And so that's the place. And then for the caterers, we settled on Juan Carlo, which is very, very popular. Uh, we believe because we've seen um, the repertoire in, in terms of uh, the, their past clients. Um, they cater to most uh, celebrity uh, celebrity gatherings. They cater to a lot of uh, corporate gatherings, and you know their their credibility is just uh, there. And then we did the food the food tasting. It's great. It's just great. That's all I can say. I I ate most of <laughs> most of the food and. I, I chose to speak for my family that they're gonna like the food and that's all I can say you know we'll just see we'll, we'll just see in the actual wedding whether I'm right or I'm partially right yeah, but the food is great and that's all in terms of uh, in terms of wedding and reception so we move into the requirements at church uh, for the wedding and they, when you go to churches around the the area in the Philippines, um, they re they require a bit a bit of uh, things from you when you decide to hold the wedding here. And the most important thing that you're gonna need are senomar, which is certificate of no marriage, and of course your birth certificate. Uh, of, of course, this only applies for Filipino citizens, but um, when you are from uh, another country or a citizen of another country, they're gonna have a. Uh, you, you can still hold your wedding here, you know, uh, regardless, but you, you're gonna have to find proof that uh, you have like income and all that stuff. And for me, luckily, I'm I'm still a Filipino citizen. That's why I I can provide a birth certificate. All I need to do was is to fall in line, and that's where I'm gonna be uh, talking about uh, in great details. Well, not really great, but in details. Yeah. So I went to the PSA in uh, Quezon City. And uh, I think that's that's my mistake because <laughs> apparently Quezon City PSA Philippine Statistics Authority has one of the largest uh, lines and one of the largest population of people going into their office at any given day that they're that they're open. There there are few more PSAs around the area. There is one in Manila and there's one in Makati. The one in Makati I, I also went to before. It's not as bad as Quezon City actually Makati is way faster because well you know they say the number of people because Quezon City has more popular in, in terms of population has the most population in all Philippines so if you go if you are planning to get your birth certificate your senomar your marriage certificate death certificate for a loved one who passed away um, warning if you're gonna go to Quezon City, you better sacrifice a lot of your time. And if if you're not into that, you know, sacrificing time, go to Makati. Um, it's just a little bit further away, away if you're coming from the south. Uh, if you're coming from the north, it's just Edsa and straight straight from straight from Edsa. If you're coming from Quezon City, but if you are if you're not into that patiently waiting, you can go to Makati. I'm not bad mouthing Quezon City. I'm just um, trying to advise you guys. But I did get it from Quezon City. And if you are going and falling in line, and you're uh, the person whom you are uh, intending to acquire, on whom the birth certificate you're intending to acquire is not present, you have to um, make copies of. Uh, their 
of, of their files, of their passport, ID, uh, any accepted ID from the government. I'm gonna flash it uh, here, and then any uh, they, they need, you need to write an authorization letter, and they need to sign it. So that's what I did because my fiance is at work during that time when I was there, and the cinema, the birth certificate, you, you're gonna pay for it, and then. They're gonna release it at the same day that you come in. But the Senomar, you have to wait until tomorrow or the next day before you get it because they they process it differently. And I don't know about the death certificate and the marriage contract. I think uh, those are uh, different days as well. But yeah, that's what that's the PSA for you. And. Uh, like what I said, make sure you bring a lot of, make sure you bring reading materials or cell phones are fully charged before you go there because here in the Philippines, I've learned that um, every, every, everything is about lines, falling in line and waiting, patiently waiting about, every, just like my love, my love for my fiance, patiently waited uh, 10 years we were together, although we're far away from each other, like me in america and her here in the philippines we patiently waited so when you're gonna go and arrange for your wedding and uh um uh, asicaso you have to at least extend that patience a little bit longer uh, it's like edsa edsa is traffic forever they call it forever may for may forever sa edsa now because you're gonna need to be patient in EDSA. And the only time it opens up, or every, um, most things open up, are the weekend, Saturday. So when you're, we're gonna, when you're gonna try to process everything, do it on a Saturday as much as you can because there's no traffic, okay? So, and then when you've accomplished everything in terms of paperwork, you're gonna go. You're gonna go and apply for a um, marriage license, which which you can get uh, in a in the city hall or the municipio in which you are uh, based in. So I'm based in Mandaluyong. I was born in Mandaluyong or Manila during that time. In but. I'm based in Mandaluyong, so I have to go to Mandaluyong City Hall to get my marriage license. The marriage license is uh, tedious in a, in a way. Like what I said, you have to dedicate a lot of your time and sacrifice a lot of your time. And you're gonna, you're gonna, if you are 18 years old or below, you're gonna have to attend a DSWD seminar, which is a seminar that is um, only held at uh, in the morning at 8 so you're gonna have to go um, <clears throat> take a day off from school or work and attend that seminar in the in, in the same city hall um, in, the, in one of the offices there so it's at 8 it's in the morning and then when you're when you're 19 and above you're I think you're already considered an adult you have to take a family planning uh, seminar, which is going to be uh, at one, only held at 1 p.m. in the building, in the green building next to Land Bank. So you go in the main entrance of the city hall and you're going to see the, a building besides Land Bank on the right. And that's where you attend the seminar. And then after the seminar, they actually give you a certificate that you've attended that you've attended the uh, seminar and it looks like this okay mine's folded so that's that's the certificate of com of compliance for the uh, seminar and you, you you need this enable for you to apply for a marriage license and when you've done all of this and you've made a copy of everything of your passport IDs um, Senomars and uh, baptismal certificate and birth certificate then you fall in line to get the license and the license is processed 
uh, one to two weeks from the day you attended the seminar and processed all the papers. And then once you get that done, when there, if there's no pending, there's no problem, then you get your marriage certificate and then you go to your parish. And then you arrange, in the parish, you arrange for a lot of seminars again. So there's th there are three seminars that you attend in, in uh, the parish. I'm gonna show you a, uh, oh no, before I forget, in the marriage uh, license, you need a copy of cedulas, which are community tax certificates. And these are available in the municipios as well. It's just um, general uh, uh, summation of your income for the whole year. You just fill out your address here in the Philippines, and your fiance fills one out too. Fill, uh, fills one out too, and you you know you can just make a summary of how much you made for the year that's passed, and they're gonna give you a cedula. And the cost depends on how much you make, so they're gonna tally it up. So if you if you make a million pesos in a year, then you're gonna have to pay more than the average person. But if you make a little bit less, then you know. Cedulas, yeah. So you need the cedula before you get the marriage license. So that's the only. and one by one. Uh, I, I forgot one by one picture. So a lot of a lot of uh, places here in the Philippines, government-wise, getting IDs and and paperworks. You need one by one and two by two photos. So uh, you could just get it at any uh, photo place. They just take uh, a quick picture of you and i think they need it for ids and stuff so you need one by ones um they they make and you can you have to make extra copies so that you have extras and two by twos sometimes they make a combo of it so you just tell the photo place so it, it's any photo place i'm gonna flash a little bit of them for you if you want and before i forget mm, that's it that's it for the marriage license and then you go to the church and schedule your wedding and when you when I say schedule your wedding I I think um, before you go you go in a, in a um, this planning you have to pick the right church that's near you and you have to pick the date that's right for you um, we picked March 7 before which is a Saturday but the time that we picked, it's at 11. And uh, there's a lot of problems that rose up with it. Uh, 11 o'clock is the hottest. Well, Philippines is already hot. So if you go in the afternoon, that is where the sun is really shining on you. It's like a big ball of sauna that's on top of you all day. Unless it rains, which is also another thing. And it, it just falls on you and just like just follows you everywhere and then when you when you decide to hold you anything whether it's a birthday party in the afternoon make sure you hold it in a in a well ventilated where preferably air-conditioned church or place because it's gonna be hot so me and the fiance decided why don't we pick another date that's or another time that's um, a little bit colder than the time that we previously have but we have we did not find a, a uh, time slot or a date that that has the available slot which is at 3 p.m. except for a Tuesday at March 10 and voila everything falls into place